Well, we are going through a, a four-week series on uh, Back to the Future, and basically what we're doing is we're taking a look at hymns of the faith from tradition, from history, and looking at how they affect us here in the present, and, and kind of looking forward as well uh, to what God may be doing tomorrow as far as worship and hymns and those kinds of issues. Today, we are going to take a look at a hymn that is as ancient as the New Testament is. It's a very short hymn, actually. Very short, well, seven words or eight words that the church has used throughout history as a way to worship the Lord and as a way to sing praises to Him. Let's go in our Bibles to Mark chapter 10 beginning at verse 46. You heard me quickly tell the story this morning to the children, but here is the actual Scripture passage. And by the way, this is in three of the Gospels' messages, this story. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is, son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus stopped and he said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling to you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. The blind man replied, the blind man said, Rabbi, which means teacher, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Father, this is your word. We are your people. We are called by your name. May we today learn to call out your name in a way that transforms us, that heals us, redeems us. In Christ's name, amen. The man's name is Bartimius, Bartimus, which means son of Timothy. Bar means son of. You've probably heard of the Jewish tradition when a boy turns 13, he goes through a bar mitzvah. Mitzvah means commandments. He becomes a son of the commandments. And bat, B-A-T, is the feminine form, and in the last 30 or 40 years, bat mitzvahs have become common in Judaism as well. The son of Timothy, Bartimus, was sitting beside the road, probably in the road, maybe on a rock, perhaps just a mat, maybe squatting. And if you've traveled around the world, you've seen people, how they squat around the world. Very interesting. I'm not going to demonstrate it this morning unless I do it behind the pulpit here. But what's the point? We imagine his clothing was caked with dust, probably because he was somewhat of an outcast, a stench about him, probably very hungry. After all, he had to beg just to survive. Thirsty. The dust was likely in his hair. I think it was even in the wrinkles of his skin. I saw something like this when I was traveling in Ethiopia. I was with my friend who's Ethiopian, and we were, we were driving in a car, and we were out in the countryside, and the road was in, in horrible shape, and it was quite dusty. In fact, they were in the middle of a drought, and so it was very dusty. And we kind of had to pick our way among the potholes and the the wrinkles and the ups and downs of the road. And there ahead of us, I'll never forget this, was a very old woman 
with raggedy clothes on, covered in dust. Her hair was matted. She was obviously sickly. And she was not just kneeling in the road. She had her face down to the ground and her hands out. And that's all she did. We, of course, stopped. Uh, My friend taught me that those who are aged and infirmed, he always liked to help them financially in some way. Those who were young and could work and weren't working, he in that culture said it wasn't proper to do that. But we got out, and he spoke to her in Ethiopian language for a moment. We gave her some money, and we went on. That was somebody's mother, somebody's daughter. Just like Timothy, Timaeus, Bartimaeus, was a son of Timothy. Somebody's child who had gotten to such a point in his life that he had to beg just to survive. And he's sitting beside the road and something very special happens that day. Jesus of Nazareth walks by. As the people, a great crowd, pass by, he overhears, because when you're blind, your hearing is more in tune, right? It's sharper. He overhears that it is Jesus of Nazareth who is passing by. And his heart, I think, leapt for a moment. By now, word had reached him, particularly with Jesus' ministry in Jericho and throughout Israel at the time. By now, word had reached Bartimaeus that Jesus Christ could heal. And here comes Jesus walking within feet of Bartimaeus. His heart likely leapt. And he thinks to himself, This is my chance. Will Jesus heal me? Will he give me sight? And so he gathers the courage to say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Although I think the first cry was, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he thinks to himself, somehow Jesus has to notice me. Somehow Jesus has to stop and heal me. This is the chance of a lifetime. He can heal my blindness, but but where is he? Is he passing by right now with the crowd? Is he still a ways off, or has he already gone by? Bartimaeus likely didn't know. So in desperation... He cries out again, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Now in that culture where they had to walk everywhere, there was a lot of time spent on the road. Teachers would often teach their disciples as they were walking on the road. So it was likely that this wasn't a noisy crowd, at least in where Jesus was, and it's likely that he was doing some teaching and walking along. And so when Barnabas begins to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me, people are like, shh, you're interrupting the teacher. But Barnabas was desperate, and he kept crying out again. And again, and again. I wonder what it was like for him to shout over and over again, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy upon me. Maybe he mentioned it, maybe he shouted a few times, maybe it was 15 or 20 times, we don't know. The phrase, son of David, is a messianic title. He was acknowledging that Jesus was more than just a teacher, that he was 
the promised Messiah. David, who was the greatest king in the history of Israel, was promised that his throne would never be vacant, that from him would come the Messiah. So when Bartimaeus cries out, Jesus, son of David, he's saying, you are the Messiah. But it's the part of the Messiah that was known as the conquering Messiah. Just like David was the conquering king. The Jews at this time had this idea that the Messiah was going to conquer the Romans, cast them off. They were slaves to the Romans at this time in history. There was no real Israeli nation. They were submitted to Caesar. And so he's using this messianic, strong, conquering title for Jesus. So he didn't quite have the the idea of what Jesus was all about. He certainly, like many Jews of that time, would not have imagined that Jesus would be led to the cross like a lamb led to the slaughter. I wonder if Bartimaeus felt something different as he cried out in, in desperation over and over again. I wonder, as he said over and over again, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy upon me. I wonder what changed in his own heart. What? There's a lizard on the floor? I'm competing with a lizard? And I'm losing? Bring him on up here. Maybe he can finish up. Oh, that's hardly even, that's, that's not a lizard. That's, that's a lizard. <laughs> and he's about this big. I'm not kidding you. I'm just going to hang it up. <laughs> it's not even the ge- gecko, geico gecko. Focus. I'm sure there were lizards on the road that day as well. And yet Bartimaeus was able to focus on Jesus. We can do it as well. All right. Over and over again, he's saying, Jesus... How did you see that lizard from all the way back there? I mean, he's this big. Oh, he, he, okay. He probably started it way back there, folks. I just want you to know. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> he's gone now. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Over and over again. Something had to have taken place in his heart as he cried that out. And that is why From the very beginning of Christianity, in fact, we have records from the 2nd and 3rd century. We have records from the Middle Ages. We have records from hundreds of years ago of people saying, This prayer, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy upon me, is the kind of prayer that we want to repeat over and over again. I first learned about this about a decade ago, and I thought, this is, this is weird. Just keep saying over and over again. And sometimes the prayer is, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And I, I thought, this is weird. You say it over and over again, and it, and it changes you? And then I tried it. With my eyes closed, I said, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy upon me. And as I said it over and over again and emphasized the different words, I began to realize that I'm not that much different than blind Bartimaeus. That there is blindness in my own heart. That I am dust too, and to dust I shall return at some point in my life. When death comes, I will be in that dust. I will return to dust. And I realized that I needed Jesus, the Son of David, the Son of God, to have mercy on me. 
I need his mercy every day. We need it. So try it sometime. It's a wonderful thing to try. It really, really is. You can do this with any passage of Scripture or any kind of phrase that brings glory to God. Try it. Try it. It's really beautiful. It's very transforming. But my question for you today is, what is the prayer that you do already repeat in your life? Did you find yourself repeating over and over again as Irma and Harvey bore down on the United States, Lord, help those people in Texas or Florida? And if we have family or friends there, as I, as I did and many of us do, Lord, please protect my Anna. It's my daughter. I found myself saying it over and over again. Perhaps for some of you it is, Lord, give me a job. Perhaps it is when we wake up in the morning or go to bed at night, Lord, please give me someone to love. Lord, please heal me. Lord, please rescue me. Or perhaps in the morning it is, good morning, Lord, I love you, I praise you, I give you this day. Show me where you are at work today and I will follow you. Whatever it might be. You and I already have prayers that we repeat over and over to God. We may not even realize it. How about the prayer that we pray for a meal? If you you have a prayer that your family or you say over and over again, focus a little bit more on it and see what it does to your spirit. Now, We have this very ancient prayer, this very ancient hymn that has been sung since this man uttered these words, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy upon me. And it has influenced and touched Christian music for centuries. It's why we have choruses at the end of each verse of a hymn that we repeat. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. It's why we often see in our hymn books that there's, a, there's a four or five lines that are repeated at the end of each verse. And I'm going to humbly submit this to you. It is why a lot of our modern day choruses repeat over and over again. The idea is for us to get it into our spirit. Son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus, son of David, seven or eight words repeated over and over again throughout church history. There's really nothing new under the sun. And in a moment, we're going to, re- we're going to sing a song called Hosanna. Hosanna means, Lord, please save us. It was the cry that went out as Jesus rode his donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. The people were saying, they had the idea of a conquering Messiah, but the people were saying, Lord Jesus, please save us. That's what Hosanna means. Save us. And we're going to sing a song that the choir and, and others have worked on It is entitled Hosanna. And you will notice that the words do repeat some. But rather than seeing it as repetitious, I want to encourage you today, each time we sing it, allow the Lord to minister to you. Focus on the words and see what God does to you. Blind Bartimaeus learned that day. That before he could see physically, Jesus wanted him to see with eyes of his heart. You and I have the opportunity to see Jesus in ways that we've never seen him before. Through our prayer life and through repetition of verses. And through praise and worship songs and through hymns. As we sing this last song together, may the eyes of your heart, our hearts, be opened up.